Hi! Happy Wednesday wine night! I um, am really excited to be back. I had last week off because I was doing a, attending a workshop and it went pretty much all day and into the night so that wasn't going to happen. So tonight I, it's one of my most favourite topics to talk about tonight, and that's women, weight loss, hormones, self-care, and, and all, it all gets packaged up for um, how we lose weight, and the sort of, basically, the, we're going to talk about three things tonight that block weight loss. So, um... The, there's a misconception. I mean, it was really old school thinking the whole calories in, calories out thing. And um, but there's also a misconception that you can just sort of do all of this exercise and you can eat sort of whether it's vegan or it's low carb, high fat, or it's paleo or it's whatever it is. There's a really common misconception that you can just choose a diet choose some exercise and there's this magic unicorn fairy dust that gets floated around and you lose the weight. Um, that's absolutely not true. So there's so many things that go into weight loss for women. Um, hi Sally, <laughs> hope your traveling's good. It looks amazing. Um, so it's really interesting, women and weight loss. So it's it's a very it's a very individualized thing. So when I talk about these things, these are the things that are I know for a fact that every single one of us it will affect us. There's always going to be other things that are that will come up just for you that you'll have that could be roadblocks that you'll have to kind of deal with. Okay. The first thing and this is just just so so huge is managing cortisol levels so cortisol is a stress hormone so when we think about hormones we mostly think about hey silly <laughs> we mostly think about hi christy we most when we think about hormones we mostly think about our sex hormones so we're thinking about our um, estrogen and our progesterone and testosterone and all sorts of things like that but um, cortisol is a stress hormone and it's produced by the adrenal glands which sit on top of your kidneys in response to stress and stressful situations in response to life you have a cup of coffee and your cortisol levels go up you walk across a busy road, your cortisol levels go up. So in the short term, in really acute situations, cortisol's amazing for us. It, it saves our lives. It, it pulls us back from the curb when we're about to get hit by a, by a truck by crossing that busy road. It's really, really in, important in short term, acute situations. The only problem is, is that a lot of the time, it's not in acute situations. A lot of the time, it's we have chronically, chronically meaning not huge amounts. Chronically mean meaning that it's elevated over a long period of t period of time. Now, what happens is, is that cortisol. There's a few things that happen with that. So cortisol is obviously when our body goes, oh, oh my God, there's so much going on, and throughout history, it's been a situation where we're going to die. So we need that cortisol, and we need it high to give us the energy to do what we've got to do. When it's we're sitting in our office spaces and we're just sitting there and we're kind of going, oh God, I'm really stressed. I've got too much to do. That it, these cortisol levels are high and they're staying high, and that's when we run into really big problems. So, when we have these chronically elevated cortisol levels, that's when you see yourself craving the sweets, right? And that's a couple of different things that are going on there. First of all, the um, cortisol is going to drop your blood sugar levels, so your body will do anything anything it can to raise them, including raise, raiding the, the lolly jar at three o'clock in the afternoon, shaking the vending machine if you need to get that sugar. So it's, it's a really big thing. And I promise you, if you've got high cortisol, when you have those sugar cravings, a carrot stick's just not going to cut it. You just will not be interested 
in that you know what you've got your eyes on and you will just be kind of gunning for it. So as well, it, in terms of um, increasing sugar cravings, another thing that happens with chronically high cortisol is that it messes with our neurotransmitters. So our neurotransmitters are serotonin, dopamine, um, norepinephrine. There's all. There's like so many of them. And what, the one in particular, dopamine, is all um, is related to our reward pathway. So when our dopamine levels are nice and high we feel all happy and cozy and relaxed and we're getting what we need and we're feeling rewarded and when our dopamine levels are in the toilet we will go looking to reward ourselves so what what is quite common in low dopamine is oh hi Jesse <laughs> what can be quite common in low dopamine is people rewarding themselves at the end of the day, a really long, hard day. Oh, I just, I, re I deserve this wine. Or sitting down on the couch and going, oh no, I deserve this chocolate. I've really, I've had a really, really hard day. I really deserve this. You deserve something, but you deserve more than that, right? Um, and you will, you will, you're, you will do whatever it takes to increase that dopamine level. So, that's another stress response and a, a sign that you may have high cortisol levels. So as I said, um, in elevated cortisol situations, um, you have tend to have low blood sugar levels. And once again, you will do whatever it takes to raise that because that's incredibly dangerous for us. So um, I'll be talking more about that later. Another thing that elevated cortisol levels does is it breaks proteins down to carbohydrates in our body. So that what happens then is that we're either using that for um, storage, i.e. fat, or we are going to be using it for energy, which is okay if you're about to go for a run, right? But if you've had a real, once again, if I'll use the analogy of the stressful day, if you've had a really stressful day and you're feeling really stressed and you get home and you sit on the couch <laughs> for the evening. So it's, um, yeah, it's, it's just really not ideal. Cortisol, another thing that cortisol does is it stores belly fat. It's stored around the abdominal area. It's stored all around that whole spare tire area. And this is why a lot of people, when they're working out really, really hard and they're dieting and they're doing all of those things that they feel like they should be doing, is that they just, and, but they just can't shift that spare tire. So that's um, another thing that could be happening for them. I hope you've all got your glass of wine. Mm. Okay. So, what do we do about elevated cortisol levels? Now look, we can test for elevated cortisol levels. There's lots of different tests that you can do at different times of the day to see where your cortisol levels should be because we need cortisol, as I mentioned in the beginning. You're not going to get up off the couch if you don't have any. We do need some. And it's usually, it should be elevated more in the morning and it should be lowered at night so that your melatonin can kick in and you can get that restful sleep. And a lot of people who have adrenal fatigue, it's sort of the opposite. So at 9 o'clock at night, they're all pumped up and they're ready to clean the house and then they can't get themselves out of bed in the morning. So, um, yeah, there's some tests we can do. But to be honest... You know, it, just asking these questions, just identifying with these things can tell you that this is what's going on for you. And once again, these are like hormones, like everything in our health, everything is dynamic, everything is moving, everything is constantly shifting. So even if that is you right now, that doesn't mean to say it has to be you next week. There's like, there's so much that you can do about this stuff. The, the human body is phenomenal. So what are we going to do? We are going to rest. <laughs> One of the things that I tell people with with um, high cortisol levels is to lie down every day for about 20 minutes. And, you know, we can do herbs, we can do supplements, there's medications, there's everything under the sun. And there is this simple thing that actually so many people find really 
really hard to do. So it's, it's part of a prescription though. It's part of a very, very real way to lower those cortisol levels, which of course is going to help you lose that weight if you need to. And it's going to help shift that abdominal weight, which let's face it, doesn't look great in jeans. But more importantly, it's a really big risk factor for um, chronic diseases. So that is our first thing that you need to know about if you want to lose weight. That isn't about, um, okay, let's just smash it out in the gym and let's just diet, diet, diet. So um, really can be really counterproductive depending on what those hormones are doing. Okay, number two, not eating enough food. Now, you know, we could propel ourselves back to the dark ages and the dark ages was where, was where we just lived on these, women lived on these ridiculously low fat, low calorie diets. Oh my God. I, I can remember my mum being so grumpy and that was probably why, right? So it's just it, too much like restricting your diet too much, especially too quickly. Some people that go decides it's on Monday tomorrow, quick, want to lose some weight, and they just plummet their, their food intake. Their thyroid absolutely goes berserk. It just goes, whoa, what's happened here? We're freaking out. We're going to go into starvation mode, and I tell you what, we're going to hang on to everything because winter has come, it's famine, and we need to survive, okay? So I'm telling you, you do that, and you watch, you watch your body hang on to fat and water. So... Um, Yes, when I talk about thyroid, I, you, you, it'll slow your thyroid down. It will absolutely slow that thyroid down. And then what happens? What do we feel like when we're sluggish and we've got a low metabolism? Hello, fatigue. <laughs> Hello, weight gain. All of a sudden, you're doing all of this stuff, and instead of losing the weight, you're putting it on, or at the very most stagnating. And also, as well, what's going to happen is all of those beautiful nutrients that act as all those B vitamins, all that magnesium, all of these beautiful, beautiful nutrients that you're going to get from these foods that act as cofactors for your neurotransmitters. There we go. Hello, dopamine again talking about our reward pathways, trust me, you can only sustain that stuff with willpower for a little while. Within four days, you are going to be raiding the lolly jar. The chip packets, the lollies, the cakes, whatever, because that dopamine will plummet again. Okay, so what else? Um, when we're not eating enough food, it's going to decrease our testosterone levels, which is... Um, you're probably, if you're a woman, you're probably thinking, oh, well, who cares? But like everything, we need some. We don't need heaps, but we need some. And, um, and you know, once again, it's a, it's a dance. They all dance together, these hormones, and they're all incredibly important. Okay, the other thing that's going to happen is that when you're not eating enough food, you're going to decrease your muscle mass. So, you know, um, you're going to end up looking like one of those... You know those older ladies that you see and their, their like arms are flapping around and <laughs> the skin's sagging and things like that because they can't they haven't maintained their muscle mass and um, as we age obviously that just happens naturally but we don't want it so don't put yourself through it okay big one too um, is that when you're not eating enough food you are going to decrease your leptin levels. Now, leptin is a hormone that tells us when to stop eating. <laughs> so ironically, when you're not eating enough, you're not making this hormone in the correct amounts that it, the, that's going to decrease so much. Um, that is going to tell you when to stop eating. So once again, this is why people end up binging because all of a sudden your dopamine's plummeted, your leptin's plummeted, your serotonin, that beautiful neurotransmitter that keeps you all warm and fuzzy and going, oh, my life's great, is, is down, is really down. So you're going to do anything you can in that moment to try and increase it. 
Do I have any questions so far? I can see there's five of you watching and I would love to hear some questions so far. Has this happened to you? Have you got any questions about anything that I have spoken about so far? I'm drinking a really nice cab um, Merlot at the moment. It's awesome. A um, preservative free one. Uh, no, okay, so no questions. All right, so what do we do about making sure that we're not eating too little and not eating too much so we can go on to um, nutrient calculators and calorie counters and macro counters and it can all get very, very specific. And there is a time and a place for all of that. There's no doubt about it. And sometimes um, you, we can get very specific <laughs> about what we need to be doing with different things, especially in um, disease states and also with people that have other sort of conditions or um, issues maybe some mental health issues or issues around food and stuff like that. So, but for most of the people, intuitive eating. So this is, this is asking yourself, are you hungry? <laughs> you know, are you feeling hungry? Now, hung hunger can be a really interesting one for different people. Hunger can be, um, it can be a physical pain in the stomach. It can be a physical sensation. Hunger can also be that, that light-headed woozy, like, oh my God, my blood sugar levels have just gone down and I'm standing up and I've got that, um, that orthostatic um, blood pressure drop where I'm just like, whoa, and my blood sugar levels have dropped too. Or it can also be um, you're extremely crappy and irritable and all of a sudden it's just like, yeah, get away from me, everybody. And you realize that you haven't eaten, that you haven't eaten for about four or five hours. Now, depending on the types of foods that you're eating, you should be go able to go for longer periods of time. Hi, Prue. <laughs> That's okay. Um, so you should be, I'm just, I was just, I'm just raving pro, but I'm just saying to everybody, throw your questions at me as I go, because I'm kind of, um, I'm in my flow and I love talking about this stuff. Hey Nick. So basically, um, where was I at? Intuitive eating. Ah, hangry. Hangry. That's exactly right, Helen. So the whole thing is, is that your blood sugar levels goes down, your blood pressure goes down, and once again, not only does everyone around you cop it, be it colleagues, kids, husbands, friends, everything, but you, um, you're, you're slipping into that starvation mode. You, uh, your blood sugar levels are going down, and you're, you will do, once again, your body, your clever, clever body, will do whatever it takes to raise those blood sugar levels because it knows what a dangerous state it is to be in a low blood pressure situation. So once again, where are you? You're shaking the vending machine. <laughs> if it's stolen your coin, you're raiding the lolly jar, you're getting into those biscuits that you at three o'clock in the afternoon that you found that you could easily walk past at 10 a.m. Uh, my PT says sleep is a massive factor. Need to get at least 7.5 hours per night to feel good and assist weight loss. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's no doubt about it. Sleep. I'm going to talk about sleep next week because sleep is its own topic altogether. And I did, you weren't here, Prue, but I briefly touched on um, resting and every day making sure that you're resting to lower cortisol levels and um, what that actually means. So you're you can listen to the beginning again and get that because it's kind of on track with what you're saying. But what you're getting at as well with the sleep is that it's not um, just for cortisol, but it's for melatonin and balancing all of that sort of stuff. Hard for an insomniac. Yeah, totally, totally. And that's what, there's so much, there's, oh, same with you, Emma, you totally need to watch next week. But there's so much that you, we can do for you guys because the whole thing is, it really, like I said, our bodies are so clever and it really doesn't take very long to get you into a rhythm to get you into a rhythm where it's it's a new habit and that might be knocking you out with some herbs <laughs> for a couple of nights so your body knows and it's like okay this is what I do this is what I do this is what I do and that becomes your new normal we'll definitely be talking about that next week though that's like its own its own beautiful subject I could talk about sleep 
until it was bedtime. <laughs> So if your lower cortisol levels, do you lose the tire? So that's interesting um, because what happens is because our body is always trying to get back to a place of balance, if you've been in a higher cortisol state for too long, um, your body, your adrenal, so this is, a, this is actually now we're getting into a conversation about adrenal fatigue. So once the adrenal glands have been pumping out all of that cortisol and all of that adrenaline for too long, it just kind of goes, I'm tired, I've had enough, I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> and it just, and it will slow its output and then you'll be fatigued, really fatigued. And usually what happens as well, by then you've got some thyroid involvement, so your metabolism is is slow and slowed right down to um, so there's yeah uh, if you're lower cortisol levels do you lose the tire um, not if it's too low because as well if you've got too low cortisol your body will go into a um, slumber state as well so it's um, the whole thing is like absolutely everything everything with our body it's this beautiful dance of um, or dance I'm from New Zealand, so it's dance. But um, it's a beautiful dance. The hormones all dance together and they want to be in a balance. They don't want to be too high and they don't want to be too low. And what will happen is we've got all of these mechanisms that will kick in to try and compensate. So all of a sudden thyroid will kick in and will go, oh my God, you're not coping, let's let's bring this whole energy down, let's bring this metabolism right down to um, compensate for the adrenal glands producing less cortisol. Really tricky. Once again, that could be like a whole, talking about cortisol could be like a whole Wednesday wine night on its own. Um, yeah, so it's it's really important to if you if you if you have low or you have high there's to really look at your your picture um to really figure out what what's going on and then you can do the appropriate treatments to get that where you want to be because right now obviously with talking to you guys I'm um, I've got to be quite general <laughs> and but all of these things that I talk about today are also things that I prescribe my patients to do so as I said that 20 minutes lying down huge they've done research on it huge even just alone 20 minutes lying down is going to regulate cortisol levels and other hormones so back to intuitive eating so when you're eating intuitively you're asking yourself if you're hungry um, you're on less than five hours sleep. Oh, Helen, you must be so tired. You need to come and see me, my love. <laughs> Definitely, we can sort that out for you. Um, okay, so intuitive eating. When you're eating intuitively, you're eating when you are hungry and you have an, a bit of an idea about what that actually means for you. Um, the other thing that you're doing as well is that you're eating till you're about 80% full. Now that is because, um, for a start, we don't want to overload the digestive system because then we're using a lot of energy <laughs> as well to try and digest. But also what we're doing, and this is really interesting, this is from a psychological point of view, is that when we're eating till we're 80% full, is that we are telling ourselves that, um, is that we're telling ourselves that, that there's more. And that it's totally okay to just have this amount, yeah, right now, because you can go and get more later. And it's, it's not, it, you're not going to run out and there's more for you. And um, yeah, and that's really interesting when women start telling themselves and then listen to that little voice and see what it says back to you. Uh, Sally, is there a best time to have the 20 minutes rest? It will, um, that will really depend on you. That's going to depend, especially you, because at the moment you're traveling around in a camper van with three kids. So um, for you, for everyone, like once again, making this 20 minute rest is making it a rest, is not making, it, oh my God, do I need to do it now? Do I need to do it later? Oh my God, when is it perfect? There is never ever going to be a perfect time. 
Like I know, like for example, I had a busy clinic day today and I knew that I was doing this tonight and I really wanted to be my best for this because I love, this is, this is my jam talking about this stuff without a doubt. So I had my rest at about four o'clock and then I got up and I had, um, I started making dinner and made sure that everything was in place so that I could be here doing this for you guys. Um, and then other times it might be at 11 and other times it might be at two. So um, it's about making that time a priority for you. So I, it's hard to answer that question for you. I hope I, hope I did. Um, intuitive eating. Okay, the other part is, is knowing um, that hunger cue. Are you actually hungry? Are you thirsty? <laughs> you know, like, uh, like realistically, I don't. There are so few people that are drinking enough water now. We have had the weather has been incredibly hot where I am, and I know that at the moment, between my um, activity level, my busyness, my long days, the heat, I should be drinking about three liters of water, and I know that there's a lot of women that are getting by on about one. So, um, and that can actually feel very, very different for a lot of people. And a lot of people mix up that hunger and that um, thirst um, cue. The other thing, are you tired? <laughs> and this is looping back, this is looping back to the conversation about the rest and what we'll talk about next week with the sleep. So are you tired? Like, are you? Are you tired? Because if you're tired, then that's resting. And that's very, very different from being hungry. And the last one when we're talking about intuitive eating is, are you nervous? Now, I know, and this is in total full disclosure, and you can tell me that you're the same, or you can, you know, maybe you've got your own personal flavor. But I know that when I'm feeling nervous in different social situations, I will eat. And some people are the opposite, but it's, it's something that I realized about myself and, I will, and I'm trying to pull up. Um, and it's, it's like a nervous reaction. So if I'm somewhere and there's like, I won't be hungry, but I'll, I'll kind of gravitate towards the food because it's something to do. Um, okay. Moira, you're guilty of poor water. So... Um, a really good thing to do and this is what I tell my patients and I was just discussing with one today is to um, set timers on your phone yeah so we do it for everything else so why not so I get people setting timers for every two hours during the day and it's like yo drink a cup of water yo well you don't have to do the yells in fact I don't think anyone do the yell does the yells I just thought I'd throw that in there but anyway the point is Set the timer, set the timer on your phone and set it for every two hours as a reminder to get up so then you're moving as well and you're moving your lymph and you're moving your muscles and you're going to have your drink of water and then get on with what you're doing and then two hours you're going to do it again but obviously not in the middle of the night especially for our little insomniacs that are listening in tonight because that's going to be not good. Okay, so we've discussed how... Uh, what have we talked about? We've talked about um, stress, increasing cortisol levels and what that's going to mean for weight gain and, um, block and actually hindering weight loss really um, and what you can do to really um, help that. And things that you can do at home, things that, that, are, that are beautifully blanket for absolutely everyone. Uh, we've talked about how not eating enough food can just absolutely it, it can just in, impair your life so much um, it can it can hinder and stop your weight loss it can mess it will mess with your hormones it will slow your thyroid it will what else it will decrease your leptin levels so you won't when you do start eating you won't know when to stop and um, we've also talked about how you can become a little bit more intuitive and um, help yourself from not eating too little. Okay, now the lucky last, because um, we're only going to talk about three things tonight. I hope everyone's drinking their wine. Nick, 
Sometimes I stand in front of the pantry looking for something to eat, but I'm not really hungry, just searching for a boost. Absolutely. And what people will do is they'll look for food or they'll look for coffee <laughs> or tea or whatever. Pick your flavor. But, um, you know, so, so when you're doing that, could you sit for five minutes? Or especially when we're getting into, um, and everyone has busy days, and I know people can't necessarily go and lie down in their office unless, you, unless you're working for Google, which sounds amazing because they don't, they have sleep pods or something, which is incredibly progressive. But um, I understand that in most people's days, you're not going to be able to do that. But what you are going to be able to do is um, anticipate when you're feeling this way and be able to take steps to have little breaks. So for most people, when they're going to do that standing in front of the pantry, vending machine, coffee machine, all of those things um, will generally be about the same time. So, you know, if you're like that in your office, at lunchtime, leave your office Go, go outside, sit down in the sun, in the shade, <laughs> whatever it is for a little bit of fresh air and that's going to make a massive difference. Then have a green tea or a cup of tea and then ride that out later with a bit of a rest or a bit of a walk around the block or something like that. But you'll, you'll be able to sort of find your flavor, find your trigger and then do little things. And that's stuff that we work on together to find your thing that you need in your lifestyle, in your day. <laughs> okay, now, lucky last, lucky last. And this is, oh, lordy lord, this is such a big one, okay? So, as I said, getting into diets and what diet works for what person on what day to lose weight, it's just like... Oh my God, I've been studying nutrition for years and I'm confused. <laughs> so you must be too. So the bottom line is, is that not one diet works and not one diet doesn't work. It's once again, it's about working out for you what works and what doesn't work. And that's really, really important. But what I am going to say is that the food pyramid is wrong. <laughs> And there's absolutely no doubt about it. And I could rave about this one till the cows come home. So the whole thing is, is, so if we look at that food triangle, that pyramid, and right down the bottom, we've got all of our carbohydrates. And I, we've got breads and we've got pastas and we've got rice and we've got, oh my God, all of these, all of these things. And then, you know, the vegetables, I can kind of get that. But then right up the top, we've got this little tiny bit for... Um, Fats, and that includes our really good fats. Like, oh, sorry, but WTF for that? What? What? So, without being the the carbohydrate police, because you know we do need carb some carbohydrates in our life. I truly believe that, and some more than others. Once again, it's about finding your flavour and working it all out. But there's there's some blanket things that if you're trying to lose weight is an absolute no-brainer. And that is, I'm going to tell you that you need to avoid your processed carbohydrates. You need to avoid your breads. And I don't, I, everyone talks about like white bread, but you know, your supermarket brown bread, so, sorry, but I'm just, I'm calling BS on it. You need to avoid your breads. You need to avoid your rice and potatoes and your processed chips and all of that jazz. It's just not going to work for you to eat that food and try and lose weight. The next thing as well is to think about what carbohydrates do in our body. So carbohydrates provide us with an instant source of energy. Now, as with everything, if we're not using that energy, what happens to it? It gets stored as fat, yeah? So the whole thing is as well, is that are you working on the a night shift? Are you working the night shift? Any type of night shift? Okay, have have some have some um, some low GI carbohydrates at night. Perfect. Go for it because you're going to be moving. You're going to be exercising. You're going to be using that energy, and that's fantastic. But for the most part, most people come home and they're winding down. They're reading a book on the couch. They're watching TV on the couch. They're doing they're doing whatever on the couch. 
having strenuous sex on the couch, okay, maybe have some carbohydrates. But the, for the most part, people are just sitting like lumps in the evening. So don't. You don't need the carbohydrates then. You just simply don't, yeah? Without being super, super crazy about this, if you think logically about it, you don't need it, yeah? So really, really, really important. All right, sip of wine. Any questions? Mm -mm 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 -mm. No, no, no. Okay, so if you're not stuffing yourself with your pastas and your rices and your burgers and your all of those sorts of things, what are you eating? So you're eating, um, if you are eating carbohydrates, and once again, small amounts um, are perfectly fine. So you're swapping your um, potatoes for sweet potato. It's really simple. It, you, it cooks exactly the same way as your white potato, but it's a heck of a lot better for your blood sugar levels and it's so much more nutrient. It's like nutrient dense. The nutrients that you're gonna get from your sweet potato as opposed to your just, your spud is um, just next level. So that is just such a quick and easy way to do it. Now, if you're having rice and you don't normally want rice and you're having curry and things like that, have cauliflower rice. It's incredibly easy to make. There's like 400 um, recipes now on go that you can just Google and work that out. And that's a really, really good way to, um, to lower your carb intake, especially in the evenings. Now, the other thing as well is why... Awesome, straightforward, actionable tips. Katie, thank you. Oh, thanks, Nick. <laughs> it's so, I think, I don't know, have we overcomplicated things? I think we have, right? Okay, so talking about fats. Now, you know, if you listen to your nana and if you listen to your mum, if she's of that age, then um, a lot of women will still have a fat phobia, which is so, so scary. And there is um, a real correlation between these women that went through that whole low calorie, low fat era where they were do extreme dieting and just cutting their fat intake so low. And now all of those women are at the age um, they're quite elderly and there's the the prevalence of Alzheimer's and dementia and things like that has just gone through the roof and that's because our brains need fat and our brains just don't work without it right so fat so why do we need them why so fats are, are the building blocks of our hormones. They, they just are. Like if you're not eating enough healthy fats, you're not making the hormones that you need. So you're not making your lovely progesterone, which keeps us all kind of like serotonin, keeps us all like happy and and um, and feeling good. And you're not making a lot of testosterone. You're not making a lot of, um, which of course, as I mentioned, we do need some, we don't need heaps, it's not just for guys. Um, you're not gonna be making your estrogen, you're not gonna be making, oh, you're not gonna be making all of the stuff that you need that these beautiful fats make. Fats also are gonna regulate your blood sugar levels. I knew cheese was my friend. <laughs> That's so funny, Prue. If you can, to if your digestive system can tolerate cheese, cheese is totally your friend. <laughs> um, okay, so it also fat regulates your blood sugar levels. So you know how you feel when your blood sugar levels are regulated. You know how you how you feel when they're not. Okay, you have like a r really. I, I know if I have bread or pasta for lunch, within two hours I want to go to sleep because my blood sugar level's gone up and then it's gone boom and it's just plummeted. So, so when we have a, a meal that's got adequate healthy fats, that, that's actually anti-inflammatory as long as they're healthy fats, then you're going to regulate those blood sugar levels. And if you're eating enough fat and protein, you should happily, without it being a stretch, without it being a burden, without it being self-denial, not feel hungry for four or five hours, like easily in the daytime. Okay, also, it's slowly digesting. It's, it's digested quite slowly. So obviously it fills your tummy and keeps you full. 
there we go. That's back to that blood sugar level thing as well. And it lubricates your joints. <laughs> as long as it's healthy fats, once again, you've got that, you've, you've got that beautiful, I don't know, I, I always think about it like slip and slide, <laughs> like the joints doing that. But um, it, you've got that lovely lubrication of all your joints. So your knees and your hips and your ankles and all of these things that we find, especially with people that need to lose some weight, start it starts becoming a bit of a problem. And it might be a bit crunchy or it might be a bit tender. Or all of a sudden, you don't have that range of motion in that joint that you normally do. Okay, so what sort of fats do we eat? with every meal. We're gonna eat coconut oil. We're going to eat, um, we're gonna take omega-3s. We are going to have olive oil. We are going to have, um, what else are we gonna have? Oh God, there's so many. The biggest thing is that we're not going to have um, is vegetable oils. We just, we don't need them. We don't need canola. We don't need soybean. We don't need those weird, hybrids you know you see them in the oil, the oil section of the supermarket and it says vegetable oil and you're like okay well what vegetable oil um so throw your questions at me if you've got any fat questions let me know mm. okay you're either absolutely loving it tonight and i'm being so informative that there's no questions or everyone's fallen asleep okay last one Last bit of why I'm not the carbohydrate police, but you don't need as much as what you think and you don't need it at night, yeah? Is um, that um, you need adequate protein. And when I say adequate, I don't mean all the protein. <laughs> I mean adequate protein. Um, being told not to eat more than half an avocado a day, why? And who buy? Still awake. Oh, thanks, Sally. I hope you're enjoying it. Um, yeah. So, no. See, look, the beautiful thing about eating healthy fats, and this ties in with it just naturally happens, is that when you're, it's that whole thing about um, blood sugar levels and um, feeling full and, and being digested quite slowly, is that you, you're not you're not going to be able to un uh, overdo it with fats. You, you will know when you're full. You really will. You won't be able to sit there and eat like a massive bowl of fat. It's just, you, you simply won't. You, you'll, you can self-regulate with fat quite easily because you'll just start feeling full and, and um, quite comfortable. Okay. Uh, so no, you can have more than half a half a protein, um, half an avocado a day, pro. I, I strongly suggest it. <laughs> really high in fiber, really high in really good fats, really, really good for you. Okay, proteins. So um, as, I, as I was saying, protein is really important. Protein is not an extremely high, high protein diet that's going to stuff your kidneys up. Yeah, um, the idea is to eat moderate amounts of protein. Once again, what's moderate? How do you have enough fat in a meal? You'll know how much you, you need. Add it, add it in, cook in it. You'll, you'll know. And the whole thing is, Cara, when you're eating a meal that's got loads of fat, eat it first. So if you've got your, um, if you've got your protein source on a plate, and then you've got your salads, and then you've got your sweet potato, and you've got your avocados, or you've got like ample um, uh, olive oil on your salads or whatever, eat the fat first. And trust me, you will self-regulate with everything else. And, um, and add more, and add more. It, it, it's really, it's a very, very interesting thing that happens with fat, and it's a really beautiful thing. <laughs> as long as it's the healthy fats and you're eating intuitively, yeah? So coming back to that thing again. 
So why do we need proteins? So proteins are broken down to amino acids. And these amino acids are then used for building muscle, and that's really wonderful, and um, yep, that, that's great, that's what it does. But also what it does is um, these amino acids are really important, once again, for um, building those neurotransmitters, those awesome neurotransmitters that keep us feeling really good. Back to the dopamine, back to the serotonin, back to all of these things that we want in abundance but not too much, remember, because like everything, we want to be in balance. <laughs> back to the balance. So, um, yeah, protein, protein, moderate amounts. Now, once again, you can do calculations for this and, um, you know, re uh, there's, uh, depends where you're looking, but it's sort of probably about between, up to about 1.5 grams per kilo of weight. So you, of how much you weigh is how many grams of protein you should be getting a day. Um, and you know, what's really interesting is that, that it's not a steak this big for breakfast, lunch and dinner. So just um, give your kidneys a break, hey? Proteins will also help stabilize blood sugar levels as well because they are slowly digested and um, yeah, really good for blood sugar regulation as well. And obviously proteins are going to help um, give you energy. So rounding it up rounding it off coming back because i suppose it can be easy to kind of go what we're we talking about again the food pyramid is wrong <laughs> it really really is and it's so confusing out there so if you can eat intuitively and if you can eat from a place of wanting to nourish yourself now how does that feel when i say that you'll either kind of be like oh whatever katie you're just going all woo woo or um, you'll go, oh, I don't want to hear that. Or you'll go, yeah, right on, Katie. But um, nourishing yourself, like eating from a, from a place of nourishing yourself, moving from a place of nourishing yourself, resting from a place of nourishing yourself, and watch and see what will happen. These are the. This is the foundation. This is the. This is the mattress. <laughs> And then the herbs and the supplements and all of that are the mattress protector, I guess. <laughs> and then we put in the exercise and things like that, which is the duvet or the doona if you're in Australia. Um, so, yeah, that's some, that's some really, really important things. And if you've got any questions, let me know. Need to stop grazing in the top paddock. <laughs> Metaphorically. <laughs> what do you mean, Sally? Tell me. Enlighten me. And then I can give you some advice. Um, look, I, I can imagine it's really hard to go through the food thing and the carbohydrate thing and the... Um, and the fat and protein thing but I'm I'm just telling you right now that if you switch things around and if you cut those carbs from the evening and stop weighing food and all of that jazz it makes a huge huge difference all on its own before anything else before you start doing anything else so do I have any more questions comments How's everyone's wine? Um, I'm really passionate about this topic. This is, this is, this is, as I said before, this is absolutely my jam. Okay, what proteins do you recommend? So, I am an eater of food. I am not a vegan, I am not a vegetarian, um, I am an eater of whole foods. So when it comes to protein, I recommend, um, depending on your belief systems of course, but I recommend um, grass-fed, organic if you can, or at the very, at the very least free-range meats, once again not too much. And um, I really like pea protein as the 100% isolate, and you can, you can get that from your health food shop. 
and I really like that in things like um, smoothies because it's quite easily digested as far as it goes and I really strongly recommend that if you have any of those bodybuilding type um, protein powders the first thing when you do when you get off this call is that you go to your pantry and you look at the ingredients list and be afraid <laughs> so yeah they've got to go so um, yeah I like I like a like a pea protein isolate I know there's a brand called raw and that's quite good too I like that that already comes I mean the pea protein isolate you can get that bulk and raw already comes in a um, pack in a package and I think you can get you can get natural you can get vanilla you can get um, chocolate which is obviously like a um, cacao mm. hi Lucia <laughs> so uh, do I have any other questions about anything that I have been talking about because as I said this is my jam um, yeah so look you know you're going to get results by following this stuff uh, Whole Foods, I don't like the powders, especially pea. Oh, okay, cool. All right, yeah. Okay, so you don't like the powders. So, yeah, so then bringing it right back to basics. How do you find um, fish? Do you get on, do you and fish have a good relationship? So, you know, by eating your Atlantic salmon and things like that, you're getting your healthy fats and you're getting your protein. So I, I really like the idea of that. Oh, thanks, Moira. <laughs> I'm glad you liked it. Um, yeah, so it's about, it's literally coming back to Whole Foods then for you. And, um, and that's going to be, yeah, I love salmon too. So what I do is I will buy it, um, or, or like kind of cut up in the supermarket or wherever I get it from and then I'll bring it home and I'll package it up separately and put it in the freezer so that if I'm home or if that's what I feel like eating then I'll pull one out and I'll defrost it and then I'll cook that for myself in some um, tasteless coconut oil and and I'll have some steamed veggies with it and once again that's a lunch that will set me up for yeah solid four hours I won't even think about food for a solid four hours, four or five hours, if I've eaten that. Um, yeah. Any other any other questions? Any other comments? Otherwise, I will go and relax. Although I do find this quite relaxing. I don't feel stressed out talking to you guys about this stuff. I kind of love it. Um, Okay, so as I was um, saying, this is all stuff that you can implement into your life. This is all stuff that will, will, will sort of stop those blocks and stop those things of, this is, this is so common. This is so common when people start losing weight because as a lot of people know, is that those first few weeks of weight loss can be quite easy in terms of watching the scales move, not in terms of changing habits but in terms of watching the scales move. And then what happens is people plateau. And also what happens is people um, lose momentum and they lose willpower because a lot of this, these diets are just based on people just like self-denial and smashing it out and doing all of, this, all of this stuff. And what happens is it's totally unsustainable. And then what happens is they either put the weight back on or they literally just plateau. So these are the things that I tell people in my clinic to put into place in your life, in your lifestyle every day. Obviously, when I work with you one-on-one, -on -one, we do that together. So I kind of go, oh, okay, so you do this job and you're going to be here on this day. So why don't you do this? Why don't you do that? And also we do a lot more um, supplementation and food stuff to work out. What you need but but you can still do all of this stuff because it's not just for now it's forever because what you don't want is to get to be a postmenopausal woman that has terrible hormone health <laughs> that
that has terrible bone density, that has uh, has struggled so much with menopause because you had just given your your hormones just such a hammering that you're just not not coping. Um, so I hope, I really hope this has been a benefit for you because what I know, <laughs> because this is the this is the ripple effect, is that if I help you, then you help other people, and then other other people. Other people, other people, other people, until we live in a fantastic world. <laughs> so um, implement this stuff, get into it, enjoy it, take control of your life, your health, your food. And if you would like to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, get in touch. Thank you. Oh, I loved your video on your story today. Beautiful. Oh, thanks, Alicia. Oh, thanks, Prue. All right, you guys, I'm going to go now and kick it on the couch with no carbs. <laughs> All right, love you guys. Thanks for listening.